What do I mean by that, Jen? You, you knew something to be real for so long and you go through that healing process and all of a sudden there's another layer that you weren't even aware of because that initial um, layer was sitting there, how you knew it so well, and then once you get past that, then there's other layers. Like for instance, I don't like this person. And then you heal it down to the point where you don't feel that. I don't like this person because. And then you heal that one down. Well, I don't like when people do that. And, but it all started from one, and it just spiders out. And what you realize is there will always be like a sentence, if it's not finished or healing, it will come up with another phrase. One word, word or so could change out of that whole thing. And... I mean, like when I'm soul coaching, you know, we start off with one sentence and then usually 20 sentences later, it's finished because we went all the way around to the whole, all the perceptions we possibly could. Because then you take it in through your sen different sensory systems also mm -hmm. as uh, there's different, um, you, so you see it coming and that may be the situation that you see it or you feel it before it's going to happen or you can anticipate the words so you hear the situation so it's also about going through those sensory systems. systems but anyways try it just do your best hold r2d you look at the rest of the healing tools the meridian tapping i would highly suggest to look at too because you all of a sudden may have a phrase and you feel yourself losing power or you feel drained and you know it oh you know so you go even though i don't like when they treat me like that i deeply and completely love accept and forgive myself and you will, so you can have a backup tool in your back pocket to actually help you disrupt those signals so you don't have to go into panic mode or you don't have to go into fear mode or you don't have to go into completely isolating yourself. We got to give you your I want, uh, legs and your foundation needs to be rebuilt because you didn't really have one when you were a kid. Okay, so go, go and do that. Um, an angel, okay, Jen, Jen has an angel for you. What is it, Jen? It's um, Archangel Sandolphin um, at giving you gifts from God. We angels bring you gifts from your Creator. Open your arms to receive. And the idea is going through this healing process, then you um, take any negative association with receiving gifts, so then you can receive freely and openly. Just call upon angels, what'd you say? Send dolphin. Send dolphin, okay? Oh, wow, I will do that. I appreciate it. Thank you, ladies. Oh, thank you. Thank and, you for and calling. Check back in sometime, okay? I will. All right, thank you. Day. You too. Take care. All right, so an interesting <laughs> start. Um, we're not sure why Blog Talk does that, but if I'm going to look at the projections, like being a spiritual investigator and figure out why it seems like things are just not lining up. And that can be considered a waiting room. Uh, like for instance, you know you're supposed to take the next shift on your path. You know you're supposed to go in this next direction, but you don't know how. Then there's what they call the path switch. And what the moment after that is the waiting room. The waiting room is very important. But it's very much where you're like, when can this be over? I'm done with this. And the anxiety and the pushing. And it's like the force. And, and then you, that's when you give up on the miracle five minutes before it happens. And the reason that occurs is because you are telling yourself there's more to heal. Okay? Because you may not realize what you need to heal. Which, especially when you're about ready to give up on that miracle. And you are warning yourself that... I can't do this because when your dream is facing you, it can be a little bit scary. When we're looking at our dream and say, we want that, we want that, and then when it's staring back and recognizes us, what happened, Jen, when that happened to you? That's what happened. It's about a natural reaction um, for me. So then it's about healing like, well, why can't I take the dream if it's looking back at me? So... Uh, <laughs> It, it, there, there's more to, it, there's, it's lining, it's, there's things unfolding that we can't even see because it's about the healing that we've done, reacclimating ourselves to creating that better reality and that reality is unfolding, it just may not be on our timeline.
Another caller. Area codes. I can't see it. 334. You're on the air with Brendan and Jen. Wonderful. How are you? Yeah, well, thank you. My, my dear sister and friend, Oculus, is visiting us, and <laughs> she wanted to call in and speak with you. Oh, I love her. Oh, Say hello. Oh. <laughs> um, do you just, you want a reading? Yeah, if I may, that would be beautiful. I would be great. Okay. Do you have any questions and concerns, or do you just want us to do a general reading? Okay. <laughs> we'll do. All right. I'm going to tap into. I see a lot of green, and I don't know if opulence is wearing green or not, but I do feel a lot of green energy of love coming from her. Um, so I'm going to refocus back on to you. And what are you physically doing? There's. And we've been sharing space this morning, so it's doing laughing and crying and hugging and. Oh, yeah. Okay, so i got to get past all that beauty and just get into what your soul wants. And Jen's picked up something. This is like, if you imagine where, I'm going to show the, our YouTube, where the, if you imagine where the angel wings kind of start. Where your shoulder blade is, the top yeah. of the shoulder blade. I would have to say probably around um, D3 maybe. Um, it's just below the um, collarbone. Mm -hmm. Now, here's an interesting part. Do you have anything... Uh, or anything in the past that had to do with Long lungs, bronchial tubes, um, chest, breast, anything like that, any issues in that area? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, last year, when I was trying to do this, uh, I found out that I had breast cancer, and I, it was a challenge to um, have studied. I was an RN, and the clay on it now, but I studied herbalism many other things, so I did the traditional route, but I did allow them to, um, or I did have a lumpectomy, and I've been an agent concerned for me because I did not do chemo, I did not do radiation, I made other changes in my life, right. so it took me that was that I won't die, you know, later, because uh, they did just, like, mass that me and radiation and chemotherapy, and I didn't do that, I, um, and that's perfectly, and how, how, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? Oh, I feel very good. I feel, I swear, I'm going to go I wish it wasn't a morning cold, but it is. I, I'm doing green smoothies. I, um, I didn't rest or sleep well last night, so I'm not able to, you know, rock But I feel very good. I just feel so fearful sometimes. Like, oh, you know, there's so much pressure surrounding the traditional Western medicine. Okay. Um, the what I'm seeing is that the as I'm listening to the cells that are in your body, they says that one of the main things that occurred happened about four years old, about inability to communicate, and. There is this point that even when you talk and talk and talk, you still feel depleted. Or when you're not talking, depleted somehow is hooked into with that communication, and you're and you just can't seem to get the nourishment uh, for yourself. And it's not about food; it's about uh, like right now with Oplin's there. She's giving you that communication. She's giving you that uh, bridge. She's giving you that nourishment that you're needing. The unconditional love. Yes. And, but this is based on other things. I, I'm, I'm refocusing because this is a very deep issue according to what I'm reading. And it seems like your right breast seems to be more agitated by this whole uh, thing that occurred when you were four. Um, mm, like now, could you have dreams or did you have to live somebody else's dreams? Oh, I, what I mean is doing what you want. 
Um, have, like, did you want to become, you know, what did you want to be when you grew up? Was it your dream or was it somebody that influenced you? No, no, no. I, I'm a artist now. However, it's just me. I'm always trying to do something that I can do for myself. Okay, that's what I want. That's what I want. Okay, not now. Right now, you're getting a chance to re sculpt yourself, which is amazing. Most people don't get to do that or don't know how to do that. But this is all based on your foundation. And it was, you felt depleted because it didn't matter what you said. You were led and you kept feeling depleted. And I would want to say deprived to some degree because it's those words that you want to say are so important to you. But they don't, people never found them as important unless you backed them up with science or backed them up with that language. So did you have a lot of people that were, or parents that were more digital, meaning um, less emotional, um, they lived in their head, uh, thought, did they think a lot? What's that? Okay, did you have any of those people growing up? Okay. It doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be bad. Were you supposed to be? Were you supposed to be a boy instead of a girl? So did your mother kind of over nurture you? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay, because the right breast feels like you're not getting the attention and the left breast says that I, I got too much attention and I feel like um, I feel it's all about the nurturing. It's about knowing that you can nurture yourself, but you could, didn't know how to nurture when you were you were little. Uh, and there's that confusion. That's probably why when you got to be the age you are now, you now can stand up and says, "Okay, I'm going to do it my way." I mean, you thought you were for the longest time until the universe smacked you in the face with uh, bad disease. Um, you got Jen has a book open from mes Messages from the Body by Michael Lincoln. So go ahead, Jen, what did you find for her? Um, breast cancer is about sucked dry. They are struggling with feelings of being eaten out of house and home. They have a lot of exploitation, resentment, and a strong rejection of motherhood or the maternal role. They are deeply in conflict about the whole feminine role and what it means to be a woman in society versus her own needs, desires, and qualities as she sees it. And so then the right side is, how do I do it right? And the left side is, where do I get it? Oh, wow. All right, did that make any sense to you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what we want you to know is that if you are, you're, you're serious about being healthy, so now I'm going to ask your soul, what do you want her to heal? I mean, you gave her information, but what is it you want to heal? <clears throat> It goes in how you're drained. It's like you really are going to have to face this depletion. And do you know what depletion feels like? 